In this part one of this end-to-end -end data engineering episode, I'm going to show you how to create AWS S3 bucket and in the identity access management service of the AWS console, we're going to create a user and for that user, we will create access key that contains the secret key and the secret access key ID. Then I'm going to show you how we can use the Databricks CLI to securely store the AWS credentials without exposing any important credentials in the Databricks notebook when performing data processing. This is what's expected in the production environment. So let's get started. This is console.aws.amazon.com. So we can see that my service is provisioned in the EU North One region. So we're going to go ahead and create our S3 buckets. Now, for the first time, you can always come to the search menu and set for S3. And then on the services, we have this S3. Just click on that. And it's going to take you to the same page again this page so we can go on and create a bucket now this is similar to storage account in microsoft azure but this is optimized for aws services so i'm going to click on create buckets and it's going to take me to the create bucket page and under the general configuration we can choose the bucket type the general purpose or the directory now this is recommended for most use cases and access patterns so i'm going to stick with this default bucket type and then for the bucket name i'm going to use this cornerstone analytics one this should be unique and globally available for you to use so this is fine and i'm going to forget about this copy setting from an existing bucket because we are not doing that we are creating a brand new bucket and then i'm going to move to the object ownership i'm going to stick with this default acl disabled and then i'm going to come to the very important one the block public access settings for this bucket now we want to access this bucket later on in the microsoft or databricks so i'm going to make sure that the block all public access is turned off because we won't actually access this outside the aws environment so we're going to see this warning turning off block or public access might result in this bucket and the object within becoming public so i'm going to click on i acknowledge that the current settings might result in this bucket and the object within becoming public which is absolutely fine so i'm going to forget about this bucket versioning and then i'm going to scroll down at the bottom and click on create buckets and in a matter of seconds the bucket will be provision we can say successfully created bucket named cornerstone analytics one so we can go on and upload data into the bucket so i can see that here under the general purpose bucket i can click on the name and then i can see the object the property permissions metrics management access points now under the object tab we will upload some files so i'm going to click on this upload functionality and then i can add files i can also bring in a folder but i'm just going to add some individual csv files so i'm going to add this 2015 to 2017.csv and then click on open at the bottom so you can see we have all the three files and then i can scroll down and click on upload and this is going to now finally ingest those three files into the bucket so we can say uploaded for more information see the files and folders table and then we can see each of the properties when i click on that it's going to open in another tab so we can see self 2015.csv one of the properties we have the object view overview the owner AWS region last modified the size type and the key and we have all of these details that's sorted now we want to go ahead and create a user in the IAM so I'm going to come here and type in IAM and click on that so that is the identity and access management environment so under the access management I'm going to click on users and then we want to create a brand new user that we can use to generate our secret, the access key and the access key ID. So I'm going to call this one, let me just call this one Abiola Divi. You can use whatever name you like. And then I'm going to forget about this provide user access to the AWS console. So click on next. So for the permissions option, so we have this add user to group copy permissions or attach policies directly. So I'm going to attach policy directly so we can see this is a best practice. So we recommend attaching policy to a group or instead then add the user to the appropriate group. And I'm going to scroll a little bit and just pick some of the policy that are needed for this exercise. So I'm just going to click up to this first five and I'm going to scroll down the bottom, click on next. So we can see the user details, the name of the user, the console password type. This is not required password reset. This is fine. So I'm going to click on create user. So we can see Abiola the user created with a few errors, no problems. And I'm going to click on this username and then under the property, the permissions, we have the group, tag, security, credentials, last access. So you want to go ahead and generate access key. So click on this 
create access key and then we can use the access key in a command line interface the cli the local code application running on aws compute service third party and so on and so forth so i'm going to stick with this command line you plan to use or you plan to use this access key to enable the aws cli to access your aws so this is fine because i'm going to be using that with the databricks cli later on and i'm going to click on i understand the above and proceed click on next and then I'm going to click on create access key. Okay, access key created. This is the only time that the secret access key can be viewed or downloaded. So you cannot recover it later on. So what I'm going to do is to just download it to my laptop. So I'm going to use the download.csv at the bottom and there we go. So we have the access key downloaded, which is absolutely cool. So we are done in this amazon environment now we want to go ahead and install databricks cli which allows us to interact with databricks platform facilitating tasks such as managing clusters jobs notebook and other resources directly from our terminal or our command line so i'm going to just open my cmd here and then press enter so first i'm going to check databricks dash h just to see the list of the resources that is accessible for me so this is going to list the version we can see the debug and then we have this command for cluster policies so i'm going to come in and use this pip install databricks cli so i'm going to press enter and it's going to allow me to be able to interact with databricks now this requirement is already satisfied because I've done this before. But if I do it for the first time, all the packages and the dependency will be installed from the Databricks CLI. So next, we need to authenticate our Databricks workspace by providing the host name and the token. So I'm going to use this Databricks configure dash dash token and then press enter. So this is going to require me to provide my Databricks host name, which must start with HTTPS colon four slash four slash so i'm going to come here and i've got this open already and i've got a cluster which is all and running or oh, let me just turn this on quickly the cluster is now up and running now i'm going to fetch my host name which is part of the url so i'm going to come here everything to the left up to this dot net that is the host name so i'm going to control c and then i'm going to come back to this environment and press control v to paste and press enter and then this is going to require us to provide the databricks token now how do we get this i'm going to come back to the database platform and i'm going to click on this icon here the name and then go to settings in the settings you need to go to under your user click on developer and then we have the access token so this is going to allow us to set up our secure authentication to databricks api using the access token so click on manage and then I'm going to just generate a new token and I'm going to call this on my Databricks Nail CLI token. You can use whatever name and I'm just going to allow this to be up to two days. That is the lifetime and click on generate. So I'm going to copy this just for once and then click on done. So I'm going to come back to the command line and right here i'm going to control v and press enter so you're not going to see the token but it is already pasted and this next step actually tells us without any error that we have fully authenticated to our databricks workspace using the databricks cli so i'm going to go ahead and list all the scope in the databricks workspace to do that i'm going to paste this databricks secret list dash scopes i'm going to press enter and we can see we have no scope and then no back end, no keyword URL. So we're going to proceed to create our scope for the AWS credentials that we downloaded. So I'm going to use this code, Databricks Secret Create Scope. And the scope is named AWS Credentials. So you can use whatever name you like. I'm going to press enter. Next, we're going to store our AWS Access Key ID in the AWS Create Scope we just created. So for that, I'm going to use this Databricks Secret put dash dash scope aws credit which is the name of the credential we just the scope we just created here and then we have this dash dash key and we have the aws dash access dash key dash id so i'm going to press enter and it's going to automatically bring up this notepad which allows us to paste what we downloaded so i'm going to come to my downloads and copy the secret access key quickly so i'm going to paste in here without exposing some other information later on so this is the secret access key and then i'm going to press ctrl s to save which is really important and then click on this close so that's done now we're going to go ahead and also store our aws secret key in the aws cred scope we just created and for that i'm going to use this databricks secret 
put dash dash scope and it's going to be within the aws scope we created and then we have this dash dash key and this is going to be aws dash secret dash access dash key and i'm going to press enter and again this is going to also bring up that notebook that we can or notepad that we can easily paste that access key so i'm going to press ctrl v to paste and then i'm going to press ctrl s to save so i'm going to close the notepad and this is now sorted. So we're gonna go ahead and list the secret in the AWS credential for verification whether these are actually created or not. And for that, I'm gonna use this Databricks secret list dash dash scope and we wanna see all the information in the AWS dash credential. I'm gonna press enter. Amazing, so we can see we have the key name, AWS dash access key, ID and then we have the last updated and then we also have the AWS dash secret access key. So these are fully registered in the Databricks score, which is absolutely cool. So this implement we have now successfully stored all our credentials in the Databricks score and we can proceed to retrieve them in the Databricks notebook to perform our data processing without exposing any important information. As I've mentioned, this is what is expected in a production environment. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can retrieve all of this information and then use them to perform our data processing and create our dashboard on top of the data that's coming from our AWS bucket. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and please make sure you subscribe to this channel for more content. See you in a moment. Bye for now.